Welcome back to the Bass Tutor. My name is Tyler Fry and I'm the Bass Tutor. So guys, today I've got a really interesting video for you. I'm really hoping everything goes as planned. Uh, I just got out of work and I'm actually heading to the lake. I'm gonna try to make a quick bank fishing video for you guys. Uh, the fall transition is in full swing. Uh, I was out here the other day and the shad are moving, the big bass are getting up in them and they're trying to feed heavily. So I'm gonna come out here for a few hours after work and I'm gonna hopefully teach you all a little bit of stuff about bank fishing and hopefully help you as you uh, get through this fall transition. So guys, stay tuned and I'll see you when we get to the water. Why won't that Kentucky eat this thing? A few moments later Got him. Oh, there they go again. There we go. It's number one. All right, guys, so what happened there? We're out here fishing this point, and there's shad busting everywhere. It's rained all day, fish are pushed up, there's shad everywhere. And uh, this old fish right here decided he wanted to play with the spook. Let's see if we can't get us another one.
Got it. Guys, these fish aren't huge, but this is a ton of fun. It's a smallmouth. Little old smallmouth, too. Eat. These little guys are the ones that get you hooked every time. I'll grab the old pliers. He really wanted that thing. Guys, let's see if we can't get another Number three, guys. Pretty fish. Another one on the spook. Call Joe. Calling Joe. I'm out here freaking wearing them out. Just got another one. Oh my God. I'm out here uh, bank fishing at this point across from the spillway. Uh, this is number four in about 10 minutes. All on a spook. They're freaking smashing. And it's, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm bank fishing. They're all on this one point. They're crowded up big time. This one swiped at it. It got him in the fin. Large mouth. I've had uh, three spots, or uh, two or three spots on a small mouth and a large mouth. It's pretty good. Yeah, they're uh, in shad and then I throw into them. Just 
Oh, dude, you're gonna freaking hit me. Three inch shad, and then I'll throw into them, and uh, they'll hit it like two or three pops. And I was throwing uh, swim baits in them, they wouldn't touch it. Something. Yeah. What's that? Huh? <laughs> Throw what? <laughs> Throw a spoon. <laughs> Yeah, there's a one of the, huh? I don't know if I ever took you to it or not. There's a way you can drive down here and you can walk down. It's one of those little side roads. Oh god, those are big ones. Great. All right, I'll do it. All right, see ya. All right, guys, I just got off the phone with old Joe. Had to call him and rub it in a little bit that we're out here smashing on him, make him a little jealous. It's good for him. But, guys, all I'm doing here is I'm on this point, and these fish have these shad pushed up on this point after this long rain, and they're pushing them all up. And this is on just about every point right now. And earlier I was throwing a swim bait, and they just would not hit that thing. But now I start throwing the spook. And those fish you just saw, I mean, that was like back to back to back. Uh, there was probably like two or three casts in between each. I mean, just craziness. So we're gonna keep fishing as long as it stays light enough to make a video. Oh, pulled it away from me. Come on, hit it again. All right, guys, we're gonna take a shot in the dark real quick. Walk over here to some points if we can't get a real quick fish. And then we'll head on out. Right, guys so i'm not sure if you can see me too great so i'll make this pretty brief but i'm just now leaving the lake it's uh 8 14. um fall is kind of a pain in the butt because i could have sat there and caught those fish like that for days you know that was super super fun time um but i wanted to go out there and show you guys that you can catch fish off the bank you know just because you don't fish off of a boat or a kayak or a john boat or whatever, you could still catch them off the bank. And so what I did today is I went out there after work and I uh, started fishing. And uh, when I first got to my first spot that I went to, it was actually super tough. The fish were busting, but whenever I would throw into them with the swim bait, they just would not hit it. And I don't know... You know, I'm not sure why they wouldn't hit it. Uh, I had one spotted bass that I saw roaming the bank, 
and I threw a little uh, little Ned rig bait on to him, but I had it weedless, and I threw it over there to him, and it looked just like a dying shad, and he mouthed it, and then he let go, and then I missed a couple on that as I fished that bank, and so I began thinking um, maybe I could go over there to this point. I noticed that the shad were really getting pushed up on the points especially. And so I decided to go fish the point that I knew was right down the road. And so you'll see, you know, I walked down there and I took off the swim bait. I didn't understand why they wouldn't hit the swim bait. So I kind of wanted to go with more of a, a reaction type uh, presentation. You know, a swim bait is a super great lure whenever they're, you know, whenever they're not really wanting to eat, but they will react to it. But I wanted something that was more aggressive, something that I knew they would get aggravated with and they would come up and hit it. And so what I would do, I would throw that spook over those shad and I worked it over top of them and they were coming up and they would hit it. And typically on our home lake, uh, you'll see, if you go back and watch any of the other videos, whenever those shad come up like that, me and Jordan especially will throw swim baits in there. And typically a swim bait is what'll get bit. But for some reason, as the water cooled down today, they just wanted to come up and explode on that thing on the top. And trust me, I'm not complaining about catching them on a spook. I absolutely love it. But the real reason I think they were biting so good today, it's rained all day, and they just pulled the lake down quite a bit about a week or two ago, and they just drained the thing. And uh, I showed that on the Bass Tutor Instagram, if you saw that. And now, where this rain come in today it was like flash flood warnings all day and uh, it poured all day long well I went out there after work and shad were just up everywhere and when I left about 15 minutes ago there was shad coming up everywhere I mean they were everywhere there weren't fish in them all but there was fish in some of them and I'm about certain if I would have stayed out there until about nine or 10 o'clock tonight, I probably would have caught a lot more. But it's hard to film in the dark. It's hard to you know, show you guys what I'm doing. And the reason I went out there today was really to make a video for you guys. So I hope you really enjoyed today's video and uh, you know, I hope you understand you can catch fish from the bank. I've caught a lot of fish from the bank and uh, you can catch them however. And if you don't fish from the bank, I hope you learned a little something about throwing that spook on top of those shad. Uh, I was throwing it on my cranking rod from ALX. That rod is a super phenomenal rod. It's an ALX Icos Hustler. And it's made for square bills and mid-depth crankbaits. But I found it does especially great for your bigger top waters like the spooks. And it does uh, really great for swim baits, for like underspins. And so, You'll see me throwing that rod and reel a lot. And the reel is a Lose BB1 Pro. And that is probably one of my favorite reels right now. The thing will absolutely sling any lure you put on it regardless of weight. And uh, you know, it was just super fun being able to throw that thing out there and catch them on it. And I was actually throwing monofilament, you'll see that. Uh, whenever I'm fishing over clear water, I like to throw monofilament on my top waters. A lot of people don't, but I'm, you know, I think, it's, if I would have been throwing braid today, you'll see in some of the clips, I was setting the hook really quick. And so I'm thinking if I would have used braid today, then there's a good chance that I might have pulled it away from the fish or the fish might have seen it. And, you know, typically I don't go too far into depth in that, you know. Typically you're working that lure so quickly that it really doesn't matter. But I had monofilament on it and uh, that's just what I like to use. And so, you know, if you use braid, you know, don't overthink it. Just go out there and catch them. If you like the mono, try it out. You know, they're both really great options. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, leave me a like and a comment. And uh, if this is your first time, make sure to subscribe and you'll see all the content just like this. I hope you guys enjoyed and make sure you get out there, take your spook, throw it out there and wet a line.